What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of Attack once again, and welcome to the 28th episode of Mining Rig Wars. If you'd like to submit your rig, be sure to click the link in the description below or email submissions at sonofattack.com. If you're just enjoying the show, of course, you're welcome to. Please don't forget, though, however, to vote with the little eye in the corner. There will be a poll and vote for your favorite rig. They will be rigs A through rigs E because we have five rigs per episode. And next week will be the next finals episode. So the winner of this week will be entered into that finals episode for a chance to win some sweet crypto. I do also have some new rigs that have been recently submitted that are going to make an appearance in the intro that you guys seem to enjoy. So without further ado, let's hop into it. Welcome back. Starting things off, we have Rig A Moneymaker by DJ. He's rocking the Biostar TB250 BTC Pro with a G4400 processor. Welcome to the G4400 Club. And he's got the Clev 4 gigabyte by two sticks of DDR4 memory, a 60 gigabyte Kingston SSD, three ASUS Strix 1080 Ti's, one ASUS Strix 1080, and two Galax Hall of Fame Edition 1070s. Powering it all is a single Corsair RM750i Gold Edition and a single Corsair HX1200 Platinum. He's running Windows 10, so I would recommend taking a look at something like Simple Mining or Hive OS. His total hash rate on ETH is 192 mega hash a second, and he did list a NeoScript hash rate of 8.2 mega hash a second. Next, we have Rig B Wall Heater by Roberto. He's rocking six RX 580 8GB XFX Triple X editions with, once again, a Pentium G4400. Welcome to the club. The Gigabyte GA H110 D3A motherboard, the 006 and 007 PCIe risers, a Senti 1050 watt power supply. I should say 1050 watt, 1000. Yeah. Oh lord. 4 gigabyte stick of Kingston at 2133 megahertz and an old 80 gigabyte SATA drive. So I don't know if that's like straight up SSD or straight up old school hard drive. I'm thinking an old school hard drive in there. He does have it very nicely wall mounted. I've never seen anything mounted like this necessarily. This clean at least and mounted to the wall. I think it's a pretty sick looking case there. He's running Claymore Single Miner, he says, at 187 mega hash a second. The GPU core clock is at 1165 megahertz and 800 millivolts. The GPU memory clock is at 2250 megahertz at 900 millivolts. Next, we have Rig C Roughneck by Paul. This case is pretty impressive, and I think that what he was trying to do here, as he described in his email, was to go ahead and build a frame that would allow him to not have a whole bunch of additional fans and let the GPUs just be able to disperse their heat on their own. And you can tell that that was the plan from the get-go because you can see there is definitely sufficient space between each GPU. The other good thing about this rig that we can tell is that he mounted the cards in a manner that would prevent them from wearing on the fan bearings in an uneven manner which should, in theory, increase the longevity of the fans on each GPU. He's rocking the EVGA 850 watt power supply, an Antec 750 watt power supply, seven RX 588 gigabytes, the ASRock Z270 Pro 4, and two sticks of four gigabytes of crucial memory at 215 mega hash a second. Next is Rig D Death Star, and he's rocking three Antec Platinum Plus power supplies, 1300 watts, three Corsair Platinum, 1200 watts, four MSI RX64 Vegas, and they are water cooled, three Asus 1080 Ti Strix Edition, 10 MSI 1080 Ti's, the Trios, and the ASRock Mining Board 13 GPU motherboard along with the Biostar motherboard which is the 12 GPU version. He has two Intel G3930 
processors, which I call the old school, but of course there's some that are even older. I think the 1830. Anyways, you guys get it because now we have the 4400 and the 5400, which we're going to be covering on the channel. So give me a give me a sub if you're interested in that. He didn't list any hash rates, and I don't know how he has the miners split up because if it was me, I would put the 64s by themselves on a rig and have them rocking out some crypto night, but that's how I would do it. And then I'd put the 1080 Ti's towards Equihash or whatever the new fork of Equihash coins are gonna be, of course, to get away from the ASICs. And then finally, we have Rig E Simple Mining Rig. He's got the Intel Seller on G3930, going old school. <laughs> and the Gigabyte GAZ270P D3 motherboard. He's got the Ballistic Sports, four gigabytes of DDR4, Nice, not getting the eight, first one of the day. He's got the S75, 32 gigabyte USB 3.0, and that's gonna be running his operating system, obviously. The Corsair RM1000X power supply, five Arctic F12 120 millimeter fans, and six EVGA GTX 1070 superclocked editions, and those are the, the black ones. His total hash rate is 2,750 solutions a second. Going back through these, of course, the frame here is gonna be one of those things that I say on Reggie is a standard frame, but it's done very nicely with PVC pipe that appears to be painted black. And this is an option that a lot of people have done that is easier than wood for some people as well as you're not, so you're not gonna have to worry about like any kind of screws or nails or anything like that like you would with a wood frame. It is supposedly cheaper. I haven't really gone out and built one myself yet. I really do need to do that. But this is an option that you guys can Google and probably the most notable piece about Rig E. Rig D Death Star, the framing is actually using the angle brackets, which is also another popular form, and you can just drill holes and use some basic nuts and bolts, some basic hardware to go ahead and get it put together. The worrisome here, like I stated earlier, is going to be that if he's running the 64s along with any of the 1080 Ti's, I don't know how, well, it's not gonna be peak performance because you're gonna get better performance out of the Nvidia cards on something like Equihash and better performance out of the 64 Vegas uh, on something like Crypto Knight. So if you're running them on the same system, running two miners uh, with two separate sets of instruction sets can be a little bit difficult, especially on a Pentium CPU, just because of the way the binding works. So I don't think that that's something that he would be doing, but I'm curious exactly what he's mining because he didn't provide us with a hash rate. So I don't know exactly what he's on. Now for Paul, I really dig this case. The entire design from the ground up was thought out very well. Uh, he did use what appears to be a, a standard size case that he put underneath the uh, essentially the angle brackets that he then put into place to mount the cards. And mounting the GPUs here from every aspect was pretty much perfectly thought out. He has sufficient space, like I mentioned earlier, to keep each card cool while they disperse the heat. They are not blower fans, so of course it's going to just dump it right around the card wherever it, wherever it's able to escape. And then he also mounted it in a fashion that's going to increase the longevity of the fans themselves. Now we don't get a lot of reports of failing fans all the time, but this is something that if you're an extra cautious sort of person, that you want to take into account. You can go ahead and validate this as well if you go ahead and look at any sort of typical computer case and the mounting orientation of it is never actually vertical unless there's some sort of custom vertical mount. But the standard way that these cards are designed is for those fans to be mounted horizontal. So if you can replicate that on your mining frame, mining rig frame, it's probably gonna be at least not hurt anything and most likely as far as the long term be more beneficial. Rigby wall heater is rocking the wall mounted frame and it's something that we've never seen before. The cable management is okay, it could be a little bit better. And while the GPUs appear to be mounted, I couldn't tell but it looks like the cables are actually running down 
and aren't wall mounted. So not fully there yet. I'd like to see the motherboard up on the wall along with the power supply and so on. The hard drive is up above the uh, GPUs there, so that's interesting. The cards are a really good choice here for the RX 580s. They are the XFX editions. You should have, you know, a couple extra BIOS profiles or, well, two BIOS profiles on there for flashing. I don't know if he's actually flashed though. He has six and they're running at 187 mega hash a second. So I would assume he's at least using the compute mode, but he can maybe get a little bit more out of it. That does seem about peak though. Finally, you have Rig A Moneymaker, and here you've got, once again, a really good example of the... And once again here... Uh, and once again here you have a really good example of use of angle brackets to go ahead and build the frame and mount it out. He has plenty of airflow with more fans than we've seen previously on a majority of different cases. Now the only gripe here is going to be that one red fan and everyone else is blue. What's up with that, bro? Come on. Let's get it matching, but there's no other gripe here. If you guys are looking for a good example for a mining rig, this is a good one. You see those two white cards as well aren't matching. I believe those are the Galax Hall of Fame editions. Pretty badass looking cards. We don't, we can't really get our hands on Galax that much here on the state side, so I'm always interested to see pictures of them because I've never actually held one or seen one, so there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode of Mining Rig Wars. Don't forget to vote for your favorite once again with the little eye up in the corner. Please, it would mean the world if you hit the subscribe button and go down into my description and click the link to Twitch and go follow me over on Twitch. If you guys have any ideas or questions or concerns revolving the channel or mining, or tech in general and there's something you think I should cover that I'm not covering, let me know in the comment section and we'll try to get that covered. I have the G5400 over here that we've been putting through its tests. I can leave a link to the live stream as well for the initial testing on the synthetic benchmarks for that. And we're gonna be taking a look at it for some mining boards. Of course, we have the ASRock Killer SLI motherboard over here. It should support up to seven GPUs. We're going to see how that works with the G5400 because, well, the old Pentiums will go out and we will start getting a new refresh of the Z370 series. And the Pentium 5400 is probably going to be the cheapest one that we can go ahead and use for our mining rigs. I'll leave a link to it in the description below, along with this motherboard, which in the BIOS is already proven to support above 4G decoding and should be perfectly fine for mining rigs. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next Tuesday.